In this training, we will examine the process and procedure for judging the legality of the landing of a javelin. This is sometimes referred to as judging flats, or flat throws. For more information, please consult a USA Track and Field or IAAF certified official. Let's take a look at the applicable rules for each jurisdiction that addresses how the javelin must land. We will begin with the NCAA, Rule 6101. The rule reads, if the metal head of the javelin makes the first contact within the legal sector, the throw shall be legal and shall be measured even though the shaft of the javelin then swings and makes contact with the ground outside the sector. However, it is the second sentence that specifically addresses the proper landing of the implement. Notwithstanding any other provisions of this section, a javelin making obvious and irrefutable first contact with the ground other than with the metal head shall be ruled a foul throw. Notice that the rule says obvious and irrefutable first contact. Thus, the javelin must clearly land with the metal head hitting first for the throw to be valid. The USA track and field rule is not as clearly written, but nonetheless means the same thing. The metal head must land inside the sector before any other part of the javelin. The IAAF rule is as clear and concise as can be. There are two important aspects of judging the landing of the javelin. First, the judge of the landing must be located outside the landing sector, and must be able to be in position perpendicular to the landing of the implement. This means that the judge must be able to move and change position, depending on the length of the throw. The judge must also be able to get low enough to properly judge the landing. It is important to note that the judge of the landing is not involved in the decision of where the javelin actually lands, just whether it lands point first or not. Let's look at some common scenarios that can occur during the landing of the javelin. In this first scenario, the javelin stalls, or does not follow a customary flight path. However, as it descends, the metal head drops, and it makes first contact with the ground. In all jurisdictions, this is a valid throw, and is measured from the point where the metal head first makes contact with the ground. In the second scenario, the javelin flight is primarily nose up, causing the tail to drop well below the metal head. This is sometimes referred to as a tail dragger. In this case the tail is the first part of the javelin to touch the ground. Under National Federation rules, this is considered a legal throw, and would be measured from the point where the tail makes contact with the ground. In all other jurisdictions, this would be considered a foul, and would not be measured. The exception to this rule is in youth competitions under the rules of USA Track and Field. In this third scenario, the javelin follows a normal flight path and lands point first. This is a valid throw in all jurisdictions, and would be measured from the point where the metal head first makes contact with the ground. It is important to note that there is no requirement that the javelin stick in the ground, nor that it break ground. It must merely land with the metal head first. In the fourth scenario, the javelin lands, in the opinion of the judge, completely flat. In all jurisdictions except the National Federation, and under USATF youth rules, this would be considered an invalid throw, and would not be measured. Under National Federation and USA track and field youth rules, the javelin would be marked from the point of the grip nearest to the runway, since the grip would, theoretically, be the first part of the javelin to make contact with the ground.